What is going on guys? This is me, Asin. So one thing I don't think I cover enough in my videos is the correct timing to utilize your hand shafts. And honestly, there's a really good reason for that. It's because the majority of the time, there is a difference between the theoretical aspect of a card and in practice, uh, how are you going to be utilizing it? Uh, because sometimes you have a hand shaft that you might want to use immediately right off the bat, but sometimes it can be incorrect to do so. And sometimes it is correct to do so. Like there are a lot of variables that can change how you want to approach uh, and tackle this issue. Uh, but today Today I wanted to give you some examples of weird situations where it is correct to do the weird thing that nobody really thinks about because there is a really high likelihood of getting punished by a specific play and you don't really want to play into that. So um, yeah, this is definitely going to be interesting value for a lot of you guys. But before we go any further, a friendly reminder to smash the like and subscribe button. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right. So first things first, let's just say that you are playing against Snake Eye and you look at your hand. It looks really good. Nibi effect veiler and you know you got your engine started but your opponent goes immediately normal summon snake eye ash what is the first thing that comes to your mind is it i will immediately effect veiler there or i will not veiler and then try to use nibiru first and then veiler at the very end when i nib uh, the divine temple summons the flamberge and then i can veiler the flamberge so that it doesn't summon back the ip and that way you don't really have to deal with a single interruption well there are a lot of pros and cons because let's just say hypothetically speaking that you veiler there your opponent can easily just beat your veiler with either Bonfire or Diabellstar Wanted, obviously, as a uh, follow play, uh, because he doesn't have to play into Nibiru. So that's a huge issue, because he can just go into Original, and then send the uh, Ash or whatever, summon the Populace, and then search for the Divine Temple, and then Divine Temple can scale, um, well, I mean, place either Flamberge or whatever in the Spell and Chap Zone, and then summon an IP in four summons. And your Nibiru is not really going to be doing too much. So if you are kind of showing, you know, some signs that you also might have Nibiru in your hand, so for example, if you think on using your Effect Veiler for too long then your opponent can make a read on on your read basically in a way and play around that whereas if you veiler really confidently in like two seconds your opponent might not think that you have other hand shafts maybe he thinks that veiler is your only option so he might just try to go for like a really aggressive line of play and then play into the nibiru so it really does depend if you have veiler and nibiru the one correct approach is to veiler immediately and then nibiru because sometimes they don't really do that but again you have to be conscious of the possibility of losing to just IP and Divine Temple because if you only have one line of play and your opponent does that, IP into SP can still be devastating and it can still pretty much just skip your turn if your hand really again only has let's say Snake Eye Ash. Now, if your hand is really good, then there is pretty much no punish. So you might as well, you know, Veiler and then Nibiru at the very end because your opponent might just have to waste a lot of extenders and then you can nib for like pretty much everything that your opponent has. And there is one very good thing about Veilering first and then Nibiru. Uh, pretty much if your opponent has a cross out designator, what's going to happen is that your opponent will most likely want to cross out the Veiler or maybe not. Let's just say that he does. Well, at least you know for a fact that your Nibiru can resolve and it's going to make the board way less annoying to have to deal with pretty much because you can Nibiru when your opponent uh, has um, the IP Masquerina and then the three level one monsters and then he still gets Flamberge into IP but you don't have to deal with Appaloosa which is good enough but now this is where it gets really interesting if you don't Veiler on the Snake Eye Ash and you and you say let's say I want a Nibiru first and then Veiler on the Flamberge at the very end what might happen is if your opponent has Cross Out Designator and then you uh, hold your nib for too long and then you use it at the correct timing and your opponent goes cross out on the Nibiru, your Veiler is not going to be doing anything, and obviously your Nibiru now got negated. The next window for you to be able to use Nibiru is when your opponent summons the Appaloosa, and at that point, obviously, it's too late because the Appaloosa can just negate the Veiler. So, yeah, there, there's, uh, again, a huge difference between drawing Veiler and Nibiru and drawing Imperm and Nibiru because... You can go Imperm before Nibiru, but not the other way around. Whereas with Veiler, the order never really changes anything because even if you control a monster, you can still use Veiler. So again, just because Veiler and Imperm pretty much have the same effect, they don't have the same activation requirement and you should still treat them a little differently. I hope this made sense, but if you still have any uh, kind of doubts or questions, let me know in the comment section. Um, anyways, let's get into the next interaction. All right, so I figured I just explained something really complicated that uh, might confuse some people. It kind of caught me off guard. As a matter of fact, this is something that Joshua Schmidt did against uh, Kanak. Well, I mean, not, he wasn't playing Voices Voice, but Kanak was playing Black Wings. You shout out to both of them, by the way, the absolute goats. I think uh, Joshua is playing Runic, uh, Bestial, something, his signature deck, I think. And uh, obviously, Kanak always plays Black Wings. 
So pretty much what happened here is that uh, Kanak went pro pot of prosperity. Uh, by the way, I forgot where I got this information from. I, I think he mentioned this in uh, one of his videos. But yeah, he went prosperity, excavated the small world, and Joshua did something insanely smart there. Essentially, Joshua did not drill uh, Kanak on the resolution of prosperity adding small world. And the reason for that is pretty simple. When you're searching a search card that has a cost, you might as well let your opponent pay the cost to search another search card because all the cards that you can search with small world the Blackwing deck, there are cards that also search. So you're searching a search card that searches a search card that also searches more search cards. The issue is, small world, you gotta waste one card in your hand. So if you have to give up on one of your hand shops, for example, in order to get search that search card, you're still losing to Drool, but you're giving up on one card for free. So now you're losing potentially a hand shop, and then you're searching, you know, it could be like your Simoon or your Sudgery or whatever, and then you get Drooled and you have one less card in your hand. And if you got drilled before that, before resolving the small world, so on the resolution of prosperity, you would have still had your hand shot potentially in your hand and your small world still for next turn. You could hand shot your opponent, and if your opponent's hand was really weak, then you're pretty much just winning the game on the spot. So if you're on the, the position where you have Jewel and your opponent does something like that, you gotta think twice before using it because, again, sometimes the timing for the card can be just a little unorthodox. But yeah, I mean, that was relatively simple, but you, you guys let me know if there's uh, something that you've ever done that was really out of the norm, completely uh, crazy, and that really won you the game out of nowhere. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys very soon. Peace.